In this video, I'm here to showcase why the Cerberus Medallion stands out as a top choice in Fortnite Zero build. I will demonstrate its versatility in key strategies, showing that it's not just about pushing opponents. Acquiring this medallion is essential for boosting your chances of winning in the end game. Here I am in Grimgate with 4 kills, and let's point out that I did land at the complete opposite side of the map in the snow biome. I was a bit shocked to see the Cerberus Medallion was still here, so of course I wanted it. My inventory was 4 shield bubbles, a blue war 4 JR, a blue auto frenzy shotgun and one big pot. If you're the type of player who has a hard time grabbing this medallion, either by third parties or simply because this POI is literally tilted towers in chapter 5, then listen carefully. I'll give you my usual strat to kill Cerberus and prevent anyone from coming my way. I throw a bubble to cover the only angle behind my back where enemies could sneak up on me. I know these don't last for long, but they're still very helpful. The very best way would actually be to throw a bunker down if you have those at that point. Also, I chose this spot because it's a tight area and on top of me, I'm fully covered, just like my right side. Since I'm also in the corner of this room, I really minimize the odds of getting a third party. Now, as I kill Cerberus, I'm still very aware if I could see any enemy footsteps on my screen. Just to be safe, I throw another bubble, which will let me loot quickly with added protection. Also, this is the safest way possible to get back to full shield. A few moments later, I finally can grab the Cerberus medallion, and yes, I chose not to take the mythic gatekeeper shotgun and leave it on the ground. I know you might think I'm crazy, but here's the reasoning. First, you can't modify a mythic weapon, meaning you are basically stuck with the attachments it has. As you might already know by now, the gatekeeper really shines when you can add a drum mag to get 5 shells before reloading. But this version doesn't have it, so you're stuck with 3 shells. The problem with this is when you miss a shot with the gatekeeper, then you will most definitely need a spray weapon to switch to after the first 3 shots. It's possible to down an enemy with only the 3 shots this shotgun has, but it's a big gamble. What I like about the frenzy is that it has 8 shells and you absolutely do not need a spray weapon with it. This means I can save one slot in my inventory for something good like mobility, heals, or utility item. I'm very comfortable with two weapons only in zero build as long as the shotgun is in auto. The next segment will show that I'm already greatly positioned in the circle and there are usually always people rotating to this POI. Plus, don't forget that I'm fully visible on enemy's radar since I carry the medallion. It's obvious that some players are looking to push me to obtain it for themselves. As I hear someone gliding, I don't hesitate to shoot him. I hit him for a lot of damage, so it's clear that I'm going to push him. What's particular about this biome are the dashes you can use to run around, either to pursue or escape. Right here, I'm the one chasing and I do not miss a shot, but because of the range, I only get around 20 damage. I'm still aware that I have 6 shells left, so I got plenty to eliminate him. As he tries to chuck splash and hide, I cornered him in this small room, so it's a GG. What's even better is that I upgrade to a purple frenzy and swap my bubbles for 6 shockwaves. I take the crown too, because why not? The next sequence will feel a bit weird, because it won't feature a lot of fighting but mostly some tracking with a visual sound effect. Usually what I do is either try to attack and be aggressive, but in this scenario, I actually prefer to be defensive and wait for the enemy to make a bad play. The way it started was when the footsteps suddenly stopped. What I like to do here is to throw a shockwave under my feet so I can be propelled above. This is not only to gain high ground, but sometimes you can actually spot the enemy right away. Unfortunately, my move didn't help as I still don't know where the enemy is. I believe he's probably still inside the same building, but I also see wings on my screen, so I need to focus focus on those two. He just landed right in front of me and I was the first to spot him, shoot and finally eliminate him. Now the only small issue is that I've lost a lot of shields which I need to fix as soon as possible. As I'm trying to get splashed by these barrels, I know someone is very close. I want to see what he does first so this is why I've completely stopped what I was doing. As you can see, the footsteps are swinging in left to right so I'm thinking he might be coming up the stairs. I position myself to do a right side peek if he actually does come up. It turns out I was right but I surprisingly missed two of my three shots and my only hit was in the 20s. Instantly, I don't really know his intentions, so I need to reposition myself quickly. Also, I realized I chose not to use shield, so that needs to be addressed sooner than later. As he tries to shoot randomly where I used to be, he decides to fly it in the air. This is the perfect timing to regain some shields, but he seems determined to find me given the proximity of these footsteps and how they move fast. To add a little extra pressure, there's someone gliding over. Plus, when the circle closes, my crown just pinged, and this will definitely alert the enemy I am nearby. This is the big disadvantage of wearing a crown. This new circle is somewhat far from where I am and I decided that I had enough. I'm using fist to extend the length of my shockwave push and even more with the dash. That was a very solid rotation but I still need to get back to 100 shields. Right after, a car is coming my way and I'm jumping and anticipating him to get out of it with my shotgun ready. I hit him for only 19 and he cracks my overshield completely. My reaction is to simply escape this as I don't like my odds of winning this for now. The three dashes from my medallion are so 
important to retreat from sticky scenarios. It took only a few seconds and then I hear a car coming. Maybe the same dude I just fought. The car passes me by but it doesn't seem like he saw me. Then another car is rolling in front of me and I'm well positioned to spray at it. Actually I'm aiming at the front trying to land shots on the driver. I hit him a few times and I think this is worth pushing. Because I have the best medallion in the game, I'm using it to quickly rush towards him. We're starting to fight around a rock and I'm usually very comfortable in these situations, especially with a frenzy shotgun. Out of desperation, he pulls his thunderbolts and that's obviously the worst move he could have done. GG dude. Now I really need cover to heal back up and reload my weapons. I spot a car very close so I don't hesitate to jump in. Also I'm already in the zone so I don't want to rush anything. I'm just hoping someone will not spot me inside it. I hear gunshots and they are out of the zone. Given my great position, I'm very confident I will see at least one enemy go towards me and hopefully I'll make an aggressive play. I see a Jonesy skin running around and I just want to make sure he doesn't know I'm here. So I need him to stop before I can shoot at him. I only get a 27 hit marker but I decide to use my dashes to push. Also I noticed his reaction wasn't even to fire back. And yes, as you can see it was already very low and I downed in very fast. I noticed that not only am I still fully shielded but I pulled zone, meaning I'm already right next to the next one. Ideally I would like to stay here as long as possible but I see footsteps very close to me. I don't see much risk in checking that out. And after I got a few hits on him, he goes around the corner. Obviously I'm not going to leave my perfect position by chasing him down. There are still 6 people left with such a tiny circle. I hear a car coming in close and I start shooting. At first I thought I was shooting at the player but I didn't realize it was his NPC. I was confused because it said I killed someone and it was also displayed in the kill feed. So it wasn't really a kill. This player was still alive. At this point I do see two car logos on my screen and since I'm not very comfortable with this, I'm choosing to shockwave away. One driver clearly sees me but I'm the first one to shoot. He then lands a few shots on me plus I see another enemy on my left and to make things even worse, someone is in the sky with wings. As I am getting shot by someone with an auto shotgun, there is only one thing to do which is to retreat. Because it is a reflex, after the shockwave, I hit my A button so I just cancelled my shockwave effect by mistake. My plan is actually to get back to full shield but I need some cover for it. I am just praying that no one is still chasing me and it seems like the enemies are not focused on me anymore. I really need to hurry up, the storm is coming, I got to reload and drink my shield. Two enemies just died back to back so I guess I'll have more leeway in this circle. Typically I want to stay on the edge as much as possible and if I can be on high ground as well it's even better. As I do so I spot one enemy trying to run away with a vehicle. I like my chances to rush him and of course I have my shotgun out expecting him to come out at any point. Now it might feel very strange that I decided to let him go but I don't want to attract attention and I will let the other three focus on each other. This will also let me think about my next rotation which is pretty far from where I am and it's outside the current zone. Because I'll definitely be the last to get in the circle, I'm trying to lay low and if anything goes south I know that I have two shockwaves for it. I hear and see that two enemies were just killed so instantly I want to try to spot the last player. Once again it is a recurring theme on my channel, the odds of this last person not being fully shielded and at full health can be high. This is why you need to spot this enemy as soon as possible and take advantage of this. Even if you are basically giving away your location to him, he then uses a shockwave and throws a bunker down. To me this is a sign that he wants to heal up. I am thinking about pushing him but I am very well positioned towards the next circle. So I'm waiting for him to make his next move. He rotates with dashes and because he threw another bunker down, I'm making an aggressive play up above. I really thought this was the final push but he wasn't even here. Now I need to focus again and spot him quickly. As I shoot at him I didn't land a single shot and he tries to get back on his bunk. Then it's only a matter of reacting quickly and after landing these 3 shots, I'm fairly confident I just shifted the odds of winning in my favor. I do not want to leave my actual spot here because of 2 things. First, he clearly is inside the storm at the moment so I know he is losing HP rather quick. Also I am behind cover and will simply have to peek a little bit to land the next shots on him. I'll let you see the final fight and yes, another victory royale in my collection. Without the Cerberus medallion for this game, it is clear to me that I would have been dead a long time ago. I would even say that this medallion is a little OP for zero build and if you play ranked it's gonna be super L4 for you. Since you watched all the way through, I'm sure you will enjoy the playlist of all similar videos from this series helping you to win in a final top 10 end game. Click on it right now and choose the next one to watch. See ya!